Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is a very important disease, lichen sclerosis. Lichen sclerosis is a common inflammatory dermatosis with a predilection for anogenital skin. The etiology is still unknown, but there is some evidence that women uh, that uh, like um, that in women, the lichen sclerosis is genetically determined autoimmune disease. And the antibodies to extracellular matrix protein one have been identified in 75% of the women with the disease. Genital lichen sclerosis is more common than extra genital or oral disease. But there may rarely be concomitant involvement of these sites, that is both the genital and the non-genital skin. In adults, the anogenital lichen sclerosis is tend, to be a, is tend to be about 10 times more common in women than in men. And perianal disease is rare in male, however common in female. Age of presentation is bimodial, both in male and in female. It is seen commonly in prepubertal girls and in postmenopausal women. There is a relationship with obesity, anatomical abnormalities that could be congenital, and trauma. Lichen sclerosis is not an infectious disease and is neither transmitted sexually. Clinical features. In male, the development of secondary fumosis in school age boys is highly suggestive of lichen sclerosis. Lichen sclerosis of the penis may be asymptomatic, but diverse, sometimes with vague symptomatology, usually encountered at rest or during or after sexual intercourse. The symptomatology include itching, burning, bleeding, tearing, splitting, uh, unexplained rash, hemorrhagic blisters, sexual dysfunctions, dyspareunia, discomfort while urinating, and narrowing of urinary stream. The genital, just like extragenital uh, rashes, manifest as atrophic leukodermic patches and plaques with telangiectasias and sparse purpura. Later on, these uh, patches and plaques collate to form larger plaques. So the glands and the papuse is involved, leading to phimosis, as you can see in the picture. The sign of the disease may be subtle with natal pin hole narrowing, slight tightening of the restricted prepuce with or without difficulty in retraction in uncircumscribed male, incomplete paraphimosis and wasting due to constrictive posthitis. The complications include post-inflammatory hyper and hypopigmentation, signs of dysplasia, carcinoma in situ, or frank cancer. Posthitis xerotica obliterans refers to the chronic damage of the prepuce by lichen sclerosis, whereas balanitis xerotica obliterans describe the involvement of glands penis. So involvement of the uh, prepuce skin uh, by lichen sclerosis is called as the posthitis xerotica obliterans and involvement of glands penis with lichen sclerosis is referred to as balanitis xerotica obliterans. The involvement of anterior urethra can be serious and 29% of the patients undergoing urethroplasty for urethral structure had some pathological evidence of lichen sclerosis. Lichen planus, zoon blanoposthitis, and non-specific blanoposthitis, and very rarely mucous membrane pemphigoid are 
the differential diagnosis of Balanitis xerotica obliterans. So this is Balanitis xerotica obliterans. You can see the lesion on the glans penis, which is later on complicated by urethral structures. The presenting symptoms in women is usually itching, which is often severe and distressing. Patient also complained of discomfort and dyspareunia if there is introital narrowing. Constipation is a common feature in girls with prepubertal disease. The endogenital disease tend to be characterized by flat atrophic whitened epithelium, which may extend around the vulval and perianal skin in a figure of eight configuration. There may also be edema, purpura, bully, erosions, fissures, and ulcerations. Sometimes the epithelium can become thickened. The lichen sclerosis seems to spare the mucosal epithelium of the genital tract. LS is a scarring dermatosis, and changes include loss of labia minora, burring of clitoris, introital narrowing, and sometimes resulting in a tiny opening into the vestibule. So you can see the thickening and narrowing of the um, uh, opening and even hypertrophic or hyperkeratotic skin in the areas of lichen sclerosis. These are the white sclerotic plaques and acanthotic epidermis seen around the vulva. Perianal lesions occur in approximately 30% of the female patient in contrast to men who do not seem to develop the perianal disease. The classical lesions seen on the extra genital skin are ivory white papules and plaques with follicular delling. That is seen in about 10% of women with vulval disease. The extra genital areas may be at the trunk or at the pressure site on upper back, wrist, buttock and thighs. Facial, lip, scalp and nail involvement have all been, all been uh, recorded. Lesion of lichen sclerosis and oral cavity are extremely rare, but is reported mainly on the tongue. This is how the lichen sclerosis on extra genital skin look like. This give uh, the appearance is mainly of um, of white sclerotic uh, papules with follicular delling and crinkly surface. This is the histological appearance of a patient of a typical lichen sclerosis. There are three zones. The first zone is zone of interface change, which you can see in this thinned out epidermis. A thinned out epidermis with uh, interface change. Then there is a zone of sclerosis. The um, papillidermis will look like, uh, looks sclerosed. Then there is a band like lymphohistocytic infiltrate as we see in lichen planus, but the difference with lichen planus is that this interface, this um, band-like in, uh, infiltrate is seen at the interface, that is at dermoepidermal junction. But in lichen sclerosis, there is a sclerosed uh, dermis between the interface change and the band-like lymphohistocytic infiltrate. You can see the hydropic degeneration of basal cells in this picture and sclerosed area in the papillary dermis. This example has the more characteristic sclerosed area seen in the upper, der upper dermis with epidermal atrophy and broad derm uh, band of dermal hyalinization, telangiectetic vessels are prominent. In this view, there is um, uh, uh, some RBC exposition. This manifests as purpuric lesions uh, or ecumotic lesions clinically. The intense edema may result in subepidermal vesiculation. This appears as vesicle or bully in some patients. The differential diagnosis clinically will be vitiligo, mucous membrane, pemphigoid, lichen planus, and morphia. 
lichen sclerosis and other dermatoses can be mistaken for sexual abuse and there is undoubtedly association between the vulval scc and lichen sclerosis but the incidence is less than 4% and lichen sclerosis have been reported in association with verrucous carcinoma with basal cell carcinoma and melanoma the disease course and prognosis there is generally a good response to super potent topical steroid but some patients have relapse of secondary symptoms requiring the retreatment or surgical options management of lichen sclerosis in males the aim are at the early diagnosis and effective treatment to obtain normalization of sexual function reverse or check the urinary dysfunctions and limit the urethral disease disease and reduce if not abolish the risk of penis cancer there is a good deal of evidence to use soap uh, substitutes like and barrier creams ultra potent topical corticosteroid usually the clobetasol propionate is used under supervision for a finite course of time patient with history of recurrent genital herpes should be prescribed prophylactic acyclovir topical clobetasol propionate have been shown to relieve the undifferentiated phimosis in many boys and so obviate the need of circumcision secondary candidal and bacterial infections should be treated topical testosterone um, propionate oral stanozol freezing with ethyl chloride liquid nitrogen cryotherapy carbon dioxide laser and acth have been used but not recommended generally a trial of oral escitretin have been shown to be of some benefit topical calcineurin inhibitors are preferred not preferred because of the risk of uh, altered carcinogenesis if medical treatment with ultra potent topical steroid is not possible or fails then surgery is indicated the surgery include circumcision including by carbon dioxide diode laser by phenyloplasty by myototomy by glands resurfacing and sophisticated plastic repair depending upon the clinical presentation subdermal injection of polydeoxyribonucleotide a mitogen of fibroblast endothelial cells and adipocytes is an interesting new approach management in female supra potent topical corticosteroids clobetasol propionate 0.05% is the first line treatment the regime currently recommended is initially using clobetasol propionate once nightly for 4 weeks then alternate nights for another 4 weeks and twice a week for further month clobetasol propionate is then used as and when required for control of itching a soap substitute is recommended such as an emulsifying ointment topical testosterone has no role in management of lichen sclerosis it is expensive and is not as effective as clobetasol propionate the recent reports have suggested the use of calcineurin inhibitors tacrolimus or as steroid sparing alternates the treatment should be for a short course as it is not advisable to use for a longer period of time because of risk of neoplastic changes cyclosporine and ultraviolet a1 therapy have been used to treat the recalcitrant disease surgery is only indicated for management of functional problems caused by post inflammatory scarring premalignant lesion and malignancy i thank you all for a very patient listening